Tonight we're looking at a program called the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Its short form is called The GIMP, and you can find out more about it at GIMP.org, G-I-M-P. And what is cool about this? Okay, you've all heard of Adobe Photoshop. Correct. And it's pricey. It Correct. can cost a lot of money if you want to do some image editing. Um, we've all used Microsoft Paint. That's We've all used, you know, whatever is at our disposal to do basic image manipulation. Well, the GIMP is very, very good. It's like a professional image editing suite, but it is available for how much money? For zero dollars. Zero dollars. How's that for an infomercial? <laughs> We're selling it tonight. We're giving it away for free for all time. They've been doing this for 20 plus years, and, uh, and it has evolved, obviously, in that amount of time to a full suite. It's fantastic. Right. But it's hard to get our feet wet. It's hard to jump into a new program. It always is. Yes. Uh, so tonight we're going to show you some of the very most basics just to get you started using the GNU image manipulation program. Well, you know that we are Linux lovers. And so you're thinking to yourself, uh, I don't have Linux. And, you know, do I have to install Linux in order to get the GIMP? Yes. Yes, you do. No, you don't. <laughs> I'd like to say yes. And please do. And, and we would encourage you to try Linux. But the GIMP is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Absolutely free. Okay? So... And truth be told, if you're nervous about Linux, which you shouldn't be because it's amazing, but if you're nervous about it, perhaps in starting with something like GIMP could get you thinking, oh, wait, there is there are programs available. You start to see right? the alternatives you, yeah. that are out there you just, and realize, hey, LibreOffice is actually a really good word processor, an Excel-compatible Excel spreadsheet program, and, right. and the GIMP is a really great image editor. So, um, just yeah, definitely a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. All right. So let's check it out. I'm going to bring it up on my screen. That is the GNU image manipulation program. I've got a, just a picture that I've loaded up there. And there's a couple things that I can see that is wrong with that picture. Uh, first of all, we can see that it is, it's been taken with the camera kind of, wow, it's crooked. It's sideways. It's whatever. Uh, I want to fix the orientation of that image. So that's one of the first things that we're going to do. So uh, let's get into it. All I need to do to familiarize myself with the GNU image manipulation program is get used to the right click and the left click working together for us. So you'll see, you know, there are menus up here and all that kind of stuff. And there are tools over here that are very, very helpful. Um, but a lot of the stuff that we need to do is done just by right clicking on the image and then we can find what we're looking for. Now I am using what's called single window mode just to give you a nice kind of experience out of the gate. And that is turned on by clicking on windows and then single window mode. And I'm using GIMP 2.8. There is a newer version that's available in beta. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd encourage you to use what's stable as you get into it as you get started. Okay, so simply right clicking on the image and then going to image and then transform. I'm going to see a couple of things that are, I'm going to commonly use. I'm going to use these quite often. Um, so it's important to familiarize yourself with where are you going to find these things. So right clicking and image is where you're going to find a fair bit of the things that we're going to look at tonight. First of all, I want to change the orientation because it is, it's vertical for some reason. So <laughs> transform and all I need to do is I need to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise and there's my image. So as simple as that, it's done and done. Or now, three times the other way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now if I press one on my keyboard, it zooms way in. What that does is it shows me the image in its full resolution. So that's the actual picture. You can see that it's pretty high resolution. Well, Robbie, how high of a resolution is this image? Traditionally, it can sometimes be tough to figure that out. Well, if you look at the GIMP interface right up at the top here, it actually always shows you right on the uh, on the t uh, title bar. So this one is 3436 by 1933. So it's good high resolution. Um, my 1080p monitor is 1920 by 1080. So if I want to use this as my desktop wallpaper, I need to get familiar with what's called cropping. Now we're going to look at resizing tonight too, but if I were to take this image and I was to resize it, watch that castle in the background there. If I took that and I go 1920 by 1080, now it is proportional. That's a fluke. That's fantastic. But if I did that and then hit scale, now the image has been scaled down to 1920 by 1080. This is just a fluke that it happened to be 16 over 9, just like my monitor. But you'll see, whoa, the castle's really, really tiny in the background there. 
I don't really need to focus on these cars over here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do what's called cropping. I do want that uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution, but I want to um, focus on, in on the castle. We're not going to zoom in on it because then it's going to get all grainy. Do you see that? I'm not sure how well that translates, but it starts to get really grainy if we were to zoom in. Right. See? Yeah. So if I go back to one to see it at full size, and then I right click and I go image canvas size instead of okay. uh, image scaling, I'm going to now set my width to 1920 and my height. See how it's, it's done that? Right. I can drag around, but now it's, it's this weird... Mm -hmm. It's this weird shape if I zoom out a bit. See that? Yeah. So instead, I'm going to go canvas size, 1920 by 1080 is my resolution of my screen, and that is 1080p. So it's created this little box here to show me what I'm actually going to be cropping into. So I can move the image around, and I can put the focus on the, the castle on the hill. There is a castle. Well, that is intuitive because mm -hmm. I would need that. There you go. I love that feature. <laughs> That's something that I find Photoshop is really uh, lacking in is that canvas kind of cropping tool. Mm -hmm. I really love the ability to, to move around on that canvas, figure out where I want it, and then hit resize. Remember, I'm not actually rescaling. See the canvas is actually, see that dotted line? Mm -hmm. That's the original image size. Okay. But now I've cropped it to exactly 1920 by 1080. The cars that are along this dirt area here are gone, but the focus is now on this. The castle. Yeah. No one wants to see the cars. Yeah. So there <laughs> you go. So this is now 1920. Look up at the top. 1920 by 1080. Well, let's say we have a 720p need or maybe we're going to post this image on our blog now if i was going to post it on my blog and it was about the castle itself i may want to get in a little tighter let's turn on proportional uh, cropping uh, for the canvas size and let's set this to something like 600 and look at how tiny that is now i can get right in there and i'm not changing the resolution like i'm not changing the um, dots per inch of the image so now if I zoom in, that's the, that's the full resolution of that original image. It's just that I've mm -hmm. cropped out the sides. So see that? Very cool. It's the same. It's just I've yeah. cropped out the sides. If, however, I want to keep the, the, the entire scale, like I can see all the stuff around, I can see the hill, I can use image scaling instead. So image, now that I've already cropped it, scale image and this is where we do need to make absolutely sure that we have this proportional linking enabled enabled yeah so if i do uh let's say i do 700 there it automatically changes the height to 394 right. which is 16 over 9 to 700 so if i didn't have that set watch what's going to happen and you may have this happen if you forget to enable this link here let's change this to 600 and then hit scale notice it left the height as 1080 so now my castle is going to go really <laughs> weird. Yep. It's gone squishy. So that's why proportional linking is, is really important between the height and width if you are scaling. You don't need to do that if you're cropping. So now if I change this to 700, it's going to create a smaller image. I've linked that together. 394 is my width, or my height, pardon me. 700 is my width. So now it's the same picture, only smaller. Yeah, it's 16 over 9, which is the you know the widescreen of my display but it's smaller now so perfect for uploading to my blog or whatever else if i go that is the full size of the image as you see it on the screen right now so as i mentioned if i wanted to i could crop without using proportional um, scaling let's say i need a perfect square so now we've got 700 by 394 i could go 394 by 394 and now i can move around that image just like this this is again image canvas size okay so we found that with Right click image canvas size. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to create, notice I've turned off the link so that it doesn't change the height automatically. I've changed this to be exactly the same as the height and I've dragged this to move it around and now I'm going to get this nice little thumbnail that is a perfect square. Nice. Okay, so I could, there are good use cases for that. So that's really quickly, um, you know, a couple of little tips for you, tricks to um, quick image editing. But the one final thing that you need to be able to do is now save your image. We need to use it online. We need yes. to be able to actually put it online. And it can be a little bit daunting and confusing if we're not familiar with the tools at hand. Typically, we're used to saying, save as. And if I do that, um, it's going to default to this XCF format. And XCF 
is the GIMP format, and it is like a P a PDF or? PSD. Okay. Photoshop document. Um, so it contains the layers and everything else. It's not something that you would upload to a website, like a JPEG. Right. It, right. And is that because it would just wouldn't be readable as it... It's so that you can then use that file and edit again. Oh, okay. So let's say I put some text over top of it. By saving it as an XEF, so save as, now I can go back and change the text without okay. having to redo all the cropping. Right. So it can be very, very handy, and it's a good way to keep master files and things like that, but it's not ideal for what we need here, which is to upload a square image to our blog. So instead, I'm going to go File, and we're going to go Export As. Be careful not to click Overwrite, because if this is in, like a family image that you've just cropped and changed, you want to leave the original image as it is and save a second copy. That's all kind of part of our backup uh, ability. So now I'm going to call this um, s you know, square, if I could spell that would help, square castle image dot jpg. It's important that I specify the extension. JPEG is um, something that's going to be compatible with web. So it defaulted to a particular compression or quality. 100 means this is going to be the best quality that this image could possibly be. It's also going to be big. Right. How big it's at 394 by 394, it's a pretty small image, but we can actually shrink this down quite a bit. So let's show an image preview. And that preview is actually going to tell us the size of that image. So see this? 199.5 kilobytes. Now if I go down to 99%, it just dropped to 168. 98 is 135. What would so, you say is an adequate size for a picture? Well, it depends on what you're doing with it and how big the image is this way, like scale-wise. Okay. If it's for print, you want to have really good quality, like go with 98% and just let and it be a big let file. It roll. But when it comes to the web, you want to find that happy medium. If you're emailing photos to family and things like that, you want to find that happy medium for, hey, it's a pretty small file. It's going to email real quick and they're not going to be annoyed that, you know, they just got this on their LTE internet <laughs> and they're having to pay a hundred dollars for the download. One million dollars. Yeah. So what is that? What is that happy? That's the question. What's the happy medium? And I'm asking mm -hmm. as a recently married person who has all these really big fancy sure. pictures. You want to send them. If I want to send them to somebody, what size should they be? Uh, well, it, again, depends on the scale. Nobody's printing them. But, so in this <laughs> particular case, it, I, I don't think it's a number. It's not like oh. a, how many kilobytes, how many megabytes. Obviously, email is limited to like, you know, if you go over five megabytes, some email servers will still bounce that back. 25 is pretty normal, but okay. if you go over that, it's probably going to bounce and it's going to take a little bit of time. And it's going to annoy people. Okay. Um, but what we want to do is not find the file size per se. We want to find that happy medium of, hey, I can't tell the difference in this preview window between, let's see where I start to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see the difference. It's starting to go a little bit grainy. I'm going to go up to 70. So 70 is 42.3 kilobytes. And I can't tell the difference between 70 quality and 100 quality. 100 quality is 199.5 kilobytes. So if you can tell the difference between them, good on you, I can't tell. So now I'm happy with 70% quality. So keep in mind, the lower the quality, the more the compression. Okay the worse the quality. Right. See that? I can see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But up at uh, about 70, now even 39 is looking pretty good, but I can see a difference between that and 100. So if I go back up to 70, it looks real good. It's perfect. It's 42.3. I'm going to hit export. And now I've got a copy on my desktop of that image. And there it is. Beautiful. So now I've got the perfect scale, the perfect shape, and the perfect file size for that image. And that's all done using a free program called the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Now these are really, really basic kind of get, let's get into image editing steps. Right. To show you that, hey, you know, this can be used to scale your photos and, and resize them and put the, get them ready for your website or whatever else you want to do, po posting them on Facebook. If you're you might want to make them a square for Facebook. Jumping into this and want to download this super awesome program, we have lots of past episodes. We sure do. Um, you can find a lot of good resources on our website, category5.tv. I guess just click on search and type in GIMP. GIMP. There's like yeah. a plethora of 
GIMP tutorials. It's incredible. Robbie knows what he's talking about. <laughs> so check it out. GIMP.org is the website uh, where you can download it for free. Uh, if you are on Linux, you can get it in your repositories. Just do an apt install GIMP or however you love to install your packages. 